just touched down. Back on road, counting money, man. You know how it goes. Hit the vip and tell my strike a pole. Hop in mode, hop in mode. Touchdown, man. We back on road, spending money, man. You know how it goes. Hit the vip and tell my strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode. Don't forget, set the bar, stick to the code. Yo, yo, this your boy Q Bar. You already know I'm the host of the Barcode Podcast 414. And today in Community Vibes, we had to pull up in Landon, Wisconsin at Prolific Arms. And who I have to my left is my homeboy, my brother from another mother, man, Eddie Silas, man. He's the founder and the owner of Prolific Arms. Definitely been there a long time, man. Appreciate having you here today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Man, listen, Eddie, the first thing I'm going to ask you, bro, and uh, I may have asked you this before, but, man, when did you fall in love with guns, man? <laughs> Honestly, bro, this shit started as a joke, bro. Uh, at the time, like, I was working out with BNSF Railways, and uh, one of the guys asked me to go shoot him. Uh, his name was Jamie. Jamie was like a ex-Marine, like, special ops, crazy, like, title or... Uh, or um, in the military, he's doing his thing, right? So uh, all this, all these dudes asked me to come out shooting with them. I went shooting with them, and I had my pistol at the time because at the time I was traveling all over the U.S. So I, uh, we pull up on the side of these plateaus. On the side of these plateaus, it's crazy because it's like militias out there, bro. I'm talking about people practicing, jumping out of, uh, jumping out of pickup bed trucks with ARs, AKs, and stuff. And here I am with a little pistol. <laughs> you ever seen Harlem's Nights when, when everybody was shooting them guns, bro? Like the everybody had Tommies and dude was like, pop, pop. That's how I felt. But anyway, Jamie ended up asking me to uh, shoot his AR. So I grabbed his AR. I shot it. I hit the target. I'm probably like 400 feet away. I hit the target dead center first time. Bing! So instantly, I fell in love, bro. And when I mean love, I'm talking about love at first sight, bro. It was like to the point to where I like I felt like the sun on my back I, I knew which way the the grades uh blades of grass was glowing uh blowing like like everything was like really intense and it felt like slow right so then i hit the target again Bing! Oh, i remember the way the gun smoke smelled bro yeah. like it was like one of those kind of surreal kind of moments like everything slowed down around me and i felt like dang this is intense right so Immediately the next day, I went and bought another one. Like right around the corner from the hotel we were staying at, it was a pawn shop. I grabbed the first one. I seen, yeah, let me get that one. Grabbed it. I was talking crazy to Jamie. Like, yeah, I got my own AR now. I'm out shoot you. Blah blah blah. This, that, and the third. So I'm gassing myself the whole time, right? So we get out there again. I unzip my bag, bring it out. Everybody there start laughing at me, like laughing, like, what is that piece of shit gun you got? And I'm like, what? It's an AR. And they like, no, nah, no, it's not. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> so I'm like, damn. So I end up selling that one to one of uh, somebody else that worked on the railroad. So I built one. Now the one I built, I bro, I watched YouTube videos, I read magazine books, all this, right? And I built one, and then I uh, went back out. So this time I unzipped my bag. It's a shooter's bag, so now I lay on top of the bag. I hit the uh, the bipods down, and I line up the target. I hit it dead center. Bing! He like, oh my god, what is that? And I'm like, yeah, something I threw together, right? <laughs> so then he like, uh, then he like, um, man, can you build me one? So I went from being laughed at to now building everybody AR-15s on the railroad, right? Like everybody asks me like, hey, can you drop this trigger in? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm just like doing more and more research and I'm just doing it as I go along, right? And um, man, I end up, everybody ended up paying me, bro. So I put end up putting a little bag together, man. I uh, end up quitting the railroad and uh, came back to Milwaukee. When I came back to Milwaukee, I noticed the lack of resources we had in our community as it relates to firearm safety. And um, I just was eager to teach people, man. So I went and got certified with the NRA, the USCCA, and I've been instructing ever since, man. So it's become like a passion of mine to teach people the right things to do with their gun as it relates to firearms and firearm safety. Yeah, man, and that's a, uh, that's a dope story, man. But 
while you were building their guns or whatever the case, were were you learning? Were you learning like how to shoot different guns? Absolutely. Like, did you feel like you was like up the park. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, I was going out there every week. So like, <laughs> like, like two, three days a week, we was going to like the outdoor range, which is it's DNR land. You don't gotta pay to do to get in or nothing. You just go out there, set up your targets, and you shoot. So. Uh, we were out there, all we were paying for is ammo, right? And they were paying me to do this stuff with them too, like to go, like, all right, yeah, make these adjustments, right, to the to the uh, to the gas or whatever on the uh, AR. So I was doing all that stuff, man, for free. And as I'm doing, I'm just learning more and more. And we talking about three, four years straight of me building other people ARs and putting them together and and learning as I go along from these military dudes that's got, you know, so much experience. So that's a lot um, where my experience come from. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. And, and what was the process? Like, what vision did you see leading up to getting this store right? Man, honestly, man, it kind of... Uh, you know, one of those things, man, and I know, again, and, and you know, I tell the story about God and how he put things together for you, man, but it was one of those things, uh, myself, I owned a security company at the time with uh, a couple of my partners, Jair Vance and Theron Rogers, and um, we were doing uh, concealed carry courses, and Garrett Lenz, he's my partner here at the store, he, uh, he, I actually went to go pick up a gun from him, and uh, cause he was selling guns out his house. Uh, he had a home FFL, he was selling guns out his house. I went to go pick up a gun from him and he was such a cool dude. Uh, I invited him to the classes to sell guns at my classes. Cause at the time we doing like 30, 40 people per class, right? So um, he actually came out there he um, he did the uh, you know sold some guns or whatever, and then we just kind of organically grew a relationship. And at the time, a little situation happened. I uh, end up quitting uh, quitting you know doing security and didn't want nothing to do with it anymore. So um, we he called me for a meeting one day. He was like, man, I'm thinking about opening a gun store, and, and I'm looking for a partner. So. I'm like, man, the opportunity just kind of presented itself organically. And, uh, man, I'm talking about when we started this store, we had nothing. I'm talking about nothing. Like, bro, when I tell you I painted the walls in this joint, I painted the walls. We found stuff on, uh, on Craigslist, all that stuff, man. It just kind of grew into, like, a, what it is today, which, you know, we do pretty well here. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um and another thing I was going to ask you, because we all the way out here in uh, Lennon, Wisconsin, uh, you know, you you a kid that grew up in the inner city. Absolutely. Uh, was it was it any kind of like, you know, scare, you know, having a gun store out this far? I mean, it was, man, but we really didn't have a choice based on Milwaukee because the ordinance in Milwaukee, you can't have a gun store in the city of Milwaukee. So I needed to come to the outskirts in order to have, you know, establish something. So, um, we, you know, we came out here. Of course, we were looking into Brookfield and all those different kind of areas. But Lennon presented an opportunity. We brought across the street from uh, the police station. So, um, you know, we get a lot of community support here. And it, it, it just kind of grew into something special here. How did you know that this location was like... Okay, the money location. I mean, the thing is, man, if you selling a good product and you genuine what you do and what you're doing, people come to you. You know what I mean? Like, people drive out here. I get people from West Dallas. I get people from uh, Tulsa, uh, Waukesha, the city especially. I get a lot of support. People know us in the city, and they come out here, man. You know what I mean? So I don't think you can base your, your, uh, your geographical location on your business, right? I mean, in like with the internet, yeah. it really don't matter anymore, right? As long as you can market through the internet and um, sell online stuff. So what we lack in foot traffic, we make up for with online sales. And also, uh, online allows us to complete uh, compete with the with the big box stores, right? So. This might look like a small store, but really, we as massive as Walmart because what we can sell online, right? Yeah. So consider that, man. If you got a business, you want to grow that business on online, man. That's the best way to go when you're selling a product. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, you learn something new every day. Now, Eddie, the the one of the most important things that I want to ask you and other business owners, because uh, everybody think running a business is peaches and cream. Oh, so, and we all know. 
that it's pros and cons and everything. But running a gun store, because this is so like new to me, running a gun store, what's like the pros and the cons of running this? Uh, one of the biggest cons, bro, if I make a mistake on paperwork, bro, I can end up in federal prison. <laughs> that's because you got a federal firearm license. Like, let's say if I let a, a gun walk out this door that uh, we don't record, like, the serial number properly or whatever the case may be, you stand a chance of going to federal prison, right? So you got to be tight on that paperwork. One of the, um, you know, it... it it, it has its pros too. One of the biggest things is being able to service the community, right? And uh, we, we taking a holistic approach to it with, as far as like the educational side of it, getting people trained um, to where they're not, you know, ignorant when it comes to firearms. Because I can show you a ton of different things when people, you know, are just doing inappropriate stuff with firearms, whether it's like looking down the barrel of a gun or something goofy like that, you know what I mean? So um, the pros is being able to service the community the cons is um, you know you you run a risk you know because the federal government is cracking down on FFLs you know uh, per like and uh, again I don't want to get political but, but uh, per Joe Biden they're trying to snatch as many federal firearm licenses as possible so yeah yeah see and, and I'm glad you was able to share that because you know a lot of people you know put in work and uh you know, some people that don't have a business just think it's just, oh, I get this, I get that, and boom, the business running. So I'm glad that you shared that to let people know in any business that there are pros and cons and you got to stick to the guidelines like Eddie himself, you know. And uh, you made a point, uh, what you just said, uh, you know, as far as uh, using, you know, a weapon, you know, properly, properly, and you are teaching a CCW class. And I know people out here, you know, may want to know how to get signed up and the type of training and the things they can learn. All right, so we do a number of classes, man. We do, um, uh, like you said, concealed carry courses where you learn it, and that's a firearm safety course. You're using that, uh, that firearm safety certificate in order to get your concealed carry license. So um, we teach that, um, and it, we cover a number of topics from uh, what to do if you encounter law enforcement, um, uh, loading and unloading a firearm, uh, the weapons in your home, uh, children and weapons, um, safe storage, and a number of topics like that. Um, another um, subject that we teach is uh, AR-15 fundamentals too. Um, and we also got uh, handgun fundamentals, which those are live fire courses that we actually do at the range. Uh, we partner with Bear Arms. So uh, if you out and looking for a great gun range, Bear Arms out in Mequon is probably one of the best gun ranges in the, uh, in the city or near the city for that matter. So um, we do all those type of courses, man. We want to offer people uh, both you know, education and firearms because for me it would be irresponsible not to. Yeah, man. and it's funny that you bring up uh, Bear Arms, you know, that's one of the uh, gun ranges I go to, you know, the people in there are really nice and they're very helpful, and yeah. informative and whatnot. Uh, how much do the classes typically cost and how long can a person keep their uh, carry concealed uh, license? All right, so uh, carry a concealed license expires every five years so you can keep it up to five years uh, you don't have to take the class again in order to renew you just literally just go renew it online they send you another card in the mail um, in order to take the classes you can go to uh, prolificsafe.com and you can register for the class through our website there so uh, seventy five dollars is the typical cost of the concealed carry courses however we're running a barcode podcast uh, so if you go subscribe to the podcast, you will get the barcode discount code where you can get $15 off the class. Okay. And I want to ask you this question because I believe I asked you this question when I uh, first per uh, purchased my firearm with you. And uh, it was, what if someone was breaking into my car and okay. I got my CCWs, my firearm, am I allowed to fire my firearm towards that person that's breaking into my vehicle? Absolutely not. <laughs> you will find yourself on the wrong side of the bars because uh, you do not have the right to use deadly force for the defense of property. Now, you have the right to use deadly force to protect yourself from great bodily harm, and that goes for you and others. Now, uh, what people ask me about uh, is like the car. Um, so, your car, 
your house and your business um, in certain circumstances. You use the deadly force may be presumed lawful when someone forcibly enters those uh, those areas, but you have to be present for you to use deadly force. So somebody at your car, um, like right now, you go outside, somebody's at your car. There's nothing you can do about it. Now you can confront somebody about your car, like, hey, get away from my car. And let's say they turned around and they got, you know, got a gun and you defended yourself, then that's something different. However, if somebody's pulling off, like pulling uh, down the street with your car, way bye bye to your car and call an insurance company. Right, because you can't go kill somebody over property. You gonna find yourself on the wrong side of the bars that way. Oh yeah. man, man, thank you for sharing that. That was a real question that I asked you. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. You know, because <laughs> that's the reason why I purchased a firearm because you know someone kept breaking into my girlfriend's car. So, right. Thank you for sharing that. You know, for those who you know are tuned in and watching, you know, uh, before purchasing the gun, you know, do it the right way. You know, have a a valid Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin, uh, yeah, yeah, Wisconsin ID. You know, um, have your your license, your carry con carry concealed license, and make sure y'all, you know, do your research, ask questions. You know, uh, you got guys like Eddie Silas, man, and who uh, share a lot of information, and uh, just don't think you can get a firearm and just and just shoot somebody. You know, it, it, that's not how it go. But uh, yeah, it's a huge responsibility, mm -hmm. man. Like you, uh, again, one of those questions we get asked stuff like that a lot, right? And it's my pleasure to be a resource. Uh, the thing is, I'm not a lawyer. However, I study concealed carry laws because uh, you know it, it's me serving the people so um, as best I can I'll try to answer the information for you and if I'm not sure about something I have no problem with getting on the uh, phone with uh, legal shield and getting answers people need yeah 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 thank you thank you now now competitors now, I want to ask you about competitors because you know a lot of people go to Cabela's a lot of people go you know to Walmart and you know these other gun stores what, how is prolific arms separated from the, the uh, you know, the competitors? So, so as far as, like, concealed carry go, man, um, like, you can go to all these outskirts. You can go to Cabela's, but Cabela's is not in the city of Milwaukee. I move around the city of Milwaukee. I live there. My family is there. I'm there. I'm investing in our community. So the thing is, um, you can go get your concealed carry license from Cabela's, but they don't look like you. They don't move through the city like you. They move in Brookfield with their stuff, or they move in, in Waukesha. They don't move around the city. So you carrying a concealed carry license looks a little different, right, from uh, the everyday like person that's going to be teaching the class. My thing is we learn better uh, statistically from people that look like us and also who share the same experience in life that we share. So I know what it is to be nervous as a black man if I'm pulled over on a side out of the road and uh you know the cops behind me and i have my gun with me like we know the difference right there is a difference whether you want to acknowledge it or not there is a difference of you know what we got to go through right so um i put all my education um like curriculum together based on my experience like moving throughout the city right so uh it looks a little different i think uh we share uh similar backgrounds when you're from milwaukee like we are yeah now eddie we all been wanting to know this question even myself we've been wanting to know this question for years bro is silencers legal yes yeah, silencers a uh, silencer so i'm sorry or suppressors are very legal right if you can pass a background check uh for a firearm then you can own a silencer okay and how long like is it the same process because you know you gotta so, do yeah background so check. so it is a background check however it is um i'm gonna say it's a bit excessive right so what i mean by that you gotta send in your fingerprints um, and also you got to submit what's called a form four and a passport photo ID. It's a service that we offer here at Wisconsin Firearms and Transfers. Mm, okay. So now y'all, y'all, y'all here now. Silencers are legal. It's going to be a long process, but you can get it. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to give us an example right now, how, you know, uh, Putting a silencer on a so firearm. it's a pretty simple thing, man. Yeah. You need uh you need a firearm with a threaded barrel, um, and also you just just twist it on, man. It's really that simple. And what it does is it makes it, um, it it takes the decimals away and make you be able to shoot the gun, um, 
and not have the sound affect your hearing long term. So mm. it's a uh, it's a pretty slick thing to have, man. And if you shoot as much as I do, then you want to uh, invest in a silencer. So. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that it's different sizes. Like, and and I play Call of Duty. Okay. And Call of Duty, you hear. Pew, pew, pew. Is that the case with so, these silencers? Is that a good I mean, thing? <laughs> the thing is, man, and again, I'm uh like, we got to be very careful with the information we see, man. A video game is not accurate when it comes to like, um, you know, just firearms, period, most yeah. of the time, right? Uh, but no, it's not going to be that silent unless you're lo- using like a 22 caliber um, silencer. Otherwise, it's still going to make some noise, it's, but it's not going to be as loud. Um, you go from like, I think the average uh, sound is like 220 decimals to probably around like 120 to 140, depending on what can you're using. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So uh, the different sizes, uh, what you have here is different caliber sizes. So here you have the nine millimeter, the 22, five, five, six, and so on. So uh, that's where uh, the different sizes are going to come in. And it's based on manufacturer too. Mm, got you, got you. Good information, good information. Now, everybody loves, you know, uh, nine millimeters and, you know, these Glocks and all that type of stuff. What's a couple of your favorite guns that you like? Man, to be honest, man, uh, depending on what it is, and I got a lot of high-end guns like, uh, you know, the CZs and all that, but uh, let's say if shit hit the fan, man, the zombie apocalypse happened, the <laughs> first gun I'm going to grab is my Glock, all right? And the reason why I say that is because Glock, are uh, they're battle-proven. I mean, before they even put a motto out, they run that motto. Uh, they shoot about 40,000 rounds. Uh, through a model before they put it out to the public for sale. So they battle test their guns and not to mention it's one of the uh, most common handguns in the United States. So um, I'm going to go with the Glock um, as far as durability goes and because uh, you can bury it in sand, you can uh, dump it in water and you can pull that gun out and still be it's able to shoot, shoot it. Still shoot, yeah, yeah. So the Glock is where you want to go. Um, and it's a good starter gun. Um, and again, it just depends on purpose, if, uh, what you're doing with the gun, whether it's for concealed carry or something for home defense. Um, you want to consider those different type of things. So. Yeah, yeah. But would you consider, would you prefer that? I mean, recommend that as a, a, a carry concealer? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Glock makes a bunch of different models. Uh, one of my favorite models is the Glock 19. Uh, you're going to have a, a magazine capacity of 15 plus one uh, standard flush fit. And um, it allows you to be able to conceal the gun. And it's a perfect in-between when it comes to concealed carry and also a gun that you can uh, couple and use for home defense because it has a a rail to where you can add a tactical light to it. So Okay, okay. Now, I know I asked for two handguns, but you already told us your favorite handgun. Which one of your favorite ARs? Is it back here? Oh, man. (laughs) My favorite one, man, I'm going to say is the Daniel Defense or LWRC, both available at Wisconsin Firearms and Transfers. But uh, both of those two are a little bit higher end. Um, But other than that, Palmetto State, if I was looking uh, just the gun to just train with and uh do some very basic thing uh things with i'm gonna go with the uh psa uh pa 15. okay right yeah yo let me save your subscribers some money real quick man 25 dollars off of anybody who goes subscribe to the barcode podcast off any firearm purchase at wisconsin firearms and transfers